JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 26th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against uh, the majority of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It underperformed the most uh, versus SEC, NOC, and ZND and OZ in that order, while it lost the least ground versus CHF, the Canadian dollar, and the Japanese yen. The greenback uh, egged out some gains only against uh, the euro. Now, the relative weakness of the safe havens, dollar, yen, and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked OZ and Kiwi, suggests that market sentiment rebounded once again yesterday. Indeed, looking at the performance of uh, global equity markets, we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of green, with the upbeat morale rolling into the Asian trading today. Although Hong Kong's Hang Seng is down 0.76%, uh, Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI gained 1.18% and 1.06% respectively. The revival of uh, market optimism may be owed to ECB's decision to expand its stimulus efforts as well as the relaxation in some um, capital requirements in, uh, in, in the US uh, that ought to free up cash for lending. The ECB said it would offer EU loans to central banks outside the Eurozone, which may have also been the reason why the Euro was the main loser while in the US, banking regulators eased rules covering large banks with, uh, with complex trading and, and, investment, uh, and investment portfolios. That said, there, there were also headlines and developments adding to concerns with regards to a second round of coronavirus fast spreading uh, worldwide. Global infected cases continue to accelerate, with the daily number uh, rising to just shy of its record, uh, which was hit last Friday. On top of that, in response to another surge in infections, uh, in infections and hospitalizations in the U.S., Texas governor announced uh, he is halting the economic reopening. Lately, we've been repeatedly saying that in the financial world, there seems to be a battle between those who believe that an economic recovery could, could happen faster than previously thought and those who are concerned over a second wave of, uh, of fast spreading of the virus something that could result in a second hit in the global economy. On Wednesday, the latter group seemed to have uh, had the upper hand, but uh, yesterday it was the turn uh, of the first. We repeat that uh, we belong in the first group, and the reason is the lack of willingness around the globe, at least for now, for reintroducing restrictions, something that allows economies uh, to continue to recover. However, bearing in mind um, uh, the accelerating infections and the neutral trading technical picture uh, in several stock indices and other uh, sentiment engages, we will stay sidelined for now. We prefer to wait for clearer signals uh, that the latest risk, risk recovery is set to continue, while in order to start considering the bearish case, we would like to see more lockdown measures being reintroduced. Now, as for uh, today's events, uh, the calendar appears uh, relatively light today, with the only data set worth mentioning being the U.S. personal income and spending for May, as well as the core PC index for the month. Personal income is forecast to have slid 6% month over month after increasing 10.5%, while spending is expected to have risen 9% month over month after tumbling 13.6%. The case for decline in income is supported by the average hourly earnings monthly rate, which fell to minus 1% month-over-month from plus 4.7%, month, 
while the strong rebound in retail sales for the month supports uh, the notion for a rebound in spending. As for the core uh, PC rate, the Fed's favored inflation uh, gauge, it is expected to have slowed to 0.9% year over year from 1% uh, year over year. The case uh, for that is supported by the core CPI rate, which slid to 1.2% year over year from 1.4%. From the final University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for June is also coming out and the forecast is uh, for a confirmation of the initial estimate which is at 78.9. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye. Have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.